Hello trumpet players, this is video number six in our trumpet listening video series. In this video we're going to be talking about live performances. Live performances are the, with one exception, and we're gonna, the next video is about that exception. Live performances are the most beneficial listening that you can do. And I wanna stress the fact that the more intimate the live performance is, the better. That said, all live performances trump all recorded performances. Being there in person is far more beneficial and far more valuable than I would say a hundred hours of listening to recordings. So you want to be, I like to make the comparison, right? You could be up, 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 up in a concert hall to where the trumpet players are little ants on stage. And that's a, that's a good, even at that, that's better than listening to recordings. I truly believe that. Part of it is because you are now officially, genuinely part of the culture, right? You heard me talk a lot about the culture thing. Now you are an active participant. But we do prefer to have uh, concert experiences, performance experiences, where you are closer and more intimate with the musicians. I, and so I like to compare the concert hall where you're up in the nosebleed to, like in Houston, the old Cezanne. Everything was so tight at Cezanne that I was concerned that water from my water key on the trumpet would drip into their drinks. That's how close we were. And the farthest seat in that old, rest, uh, old uh, nightclub was no more than 15 yards away from the guys that were performing. And just to give you an example, I saw Dave Liebman there, um, I saw Randy Brecker there, and just a whole long list of musicians that you would never get that close to if you were going to a like a festival or something like that, where the stage is there and you're way back over here. The closer you can get in that performance, the better. And I would also say that the fewer other instruments there are, if you're really... Now, this is more true for the people who are just getting started, the beginners. Don't think I'm saying that everybody needs to have this, okay? But the fewer other instruments there are in the performance, so like a brass quintet concert, for you as a beginner, is a much better concert to go to than a symphony concert where there's 70 other musicians on stage with the trumpets. You're going to, as a beginner, get more benefit from hearing a brass quintet. Or another example is a trumpet recital. Go to the trumpet recital, sit in the first row. Sit in the first row and absorb everything that's going on on stage. It's not just the notes that are coming out of the bell. It is far more beneficial to be close like that. Smell his breath. <laughs> right? So to speak. Um, and if, if you have an opportunity to do, the, to do the meet and greet after the performance, go say hello. Make a connection. Make, if you have questions and it's appropriate to ask them, ask questions. 
be an active part of the community. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my background. So the first live music I was ever exposed to was singing hymns in church. I grew up on bass, so we were at different churches at different parts of my life, but they, to my knowledge, we always had organ. There was always organ. So I grew up hearing organists play not just the hymns, but playing the prelude music, the offertory music. You know, there's always all kinds of extra music going on, and the organists would be a big part of that. And probably the first trumpet player I ever heard was probably that. I don't have a, a, a memory of that. But that's probably how it was, because there are trumpet players that go to the churches and play. So that's my earliest experience. And, and to say that it had no impact on my musicianship would be stupid. The hymns, not, you know, it, it, it has had an impact on my my sense of melody, it's had an impact on my sense of harmony, it's had an impact on my sense of form. The hymns are a huge component of my writing and my performance. I tried to get away from that, actually, for a while. I tried to write less hymn-like in my writing. And the problem with that is I hated it. I didn't like what it sounded like. So even though I don't write everything as hymns, everything that I write is influenced by hymns. And then what else? The, the, the earliest non-church performances I can remember, see, I just told you I grew up on bass. I used to hear, and I have just vague memories of this because it was so long ago, um, but I have actual memories of going to public events like at, at community parks and stuff like that where the military band was there playing a concert. My first concert experience was military bands playing probably patriotic music and stuff like that. That was my first concert experience. It's not a coincidence that a lot of those stuff, the way I write, is consistent with the whole band tradition. That's not a coincidence. As I got older, I started listening to other stuff. My very first jazz concert that I ever went to was Clark Terry. You can't go wrong with that, right? What a wonderful performance that was. He had performed with the New Mexico State University. NMSU? New Mexico State? Yes, New Mexico State University. Um, and my teacher at the time took me because it was, we lived in El Paso, NMSU is in Las Cruces. It's about a 30-minute drive, I guess. And we went to this concert, and it was at one point, because I was sitting in the front row, at one point, Clark Terry's doing his famous mumbles song, and he's looking straight at me singing mumbles to me. <laughs> right? How many of you can say that? And yes, it has an impact. Yeah, there's, there's, you can listen to hundreds of hours of Clark Terry. It will never outweigh the impact that had when you were sat there in the first row and he pointed at you and did his famous mumble song. You can't, that's just, you, just that's so precious of a moment, right? And once again, I'm going to stress the fact that that put me in the midst of the culture. Now let's talk about jam sessions too. I started going to jam sessions thanks to my friend Eric Edwards. Eric could drive, I could not. And we were in high school when we started going. And we used to go to jam sessions 
and sit in. But you know what the nice thing about jam sessions is? is unless you're an absolute jerk, you're not playing the whole time. What are you doing when you're not playing? You're sitting there listening to everybody else. So now you're getting more of that, that, um, what do you call it? The, the, um, exposure, more of that experience from the live performance, even though you're a participant to some degree. You're also receiving so much. That's part of the reason why the jam sessions are so important. If, you're a, if you consider yourself a jazz, jazz player and you don't go to jam sessions, that's just not right. You shouldn't even be calling yourself a jazz player. Really. Because you're not part of the community. If you claim to be part of this group of people, but you never interact with those people, that's just not right. It's not real. You have to go to the jam sessions. And that's the nature of jam sessions, right? Some people will say, well, I don't like the jam sessions. Uh, the, the, either they're, they're this or they're that. They have complaints about it, right? Um, either the musicians aren't good enough or they're... Or they're or they're jerks, or stuff like that. Well, it's, that's the community you have. If you decide, well, they're not good enough for you, so you're not going to go to the jam session, that's, that's a deal killer right there. Everything, we talk in these videos, we talk about the problem of being just an ap academic musician. I don't mean that as a compliment. Being just an academic musician, part of what I mean by that is you're not part of the community. If you're not part of the community, then everything that you're doing is just theory. It's just theory. There's no, there's no music going on there. Music is a living art form. It happens in the moment. It's got a, it's got a heartbeat. It's, it's got a, a breath. It adapts. True life adapts, right? Jazz adapts. So, and the same thing happens with, by the way, um, classical. I, I, I know I've been stressing more jazz stuff. The same thing is true with classical stuff. In fact, you know what, I think it's probably a little easier, believe it or not, it's probably a little easier to attend classical, intimate classical performances because a lot of that stuff, they don't charge you to get in. If someone's having a recital at a church, normally you don't have to pay to get in there. So the only hard part is to Keep track of who's playing where. Um, if you live in a city where there is a music school, there is constantly recitals going on. And yes, I, you could say, well, they're just students. I'll tell you what, this is one of the things I wanted to say in this video. Listening to a graduate student in a recital live is more valuable than listening to Maurice Andre on a recording. Let that sink in. I'm going to say it one more time. Listening to a graduate student live in a recital at their school is more valuable and more beneficial to you as a student of music than listening to Recordings of people like Maurice Andre who are regarded as the best in the world. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't listen to those recordings. We talked about that in two videos back, right? Of course you should listen to the recordings. Because it's more convenient. And it's more uh, historical. You get to hear what people sounded like long ago. 
but the value you get from being present outweighs all of the stuff you could get, all of the benefit you get from listening to a recording. And it doesn't matter how good or how successful the musician is that you're listening to. And I think part of that is what I keep going on about, about the culture. And there's also, and I know I said this in a previous video, there's also the economy part of it. When I talked about buying CDs, there's sort of like an, a, a, a musical ecology associated with the economy. And if people are not supporting each other, why would the general public support them? If you're not going to their concerts, why should Joe Blow go to the concert? This is your field. You should be going to the concerts. You should be going to the recitals. You should be going to the jam sessions. You should be going to the nightclubs and hearing your, the, the, the top players in town play. Now, I'm going to admit, I don't do as much of that as I used to, but I still do it. I still go and hear. What I normally do is I will swing by the clubs or whatever after I've, like if my gig gets out and I'm on that side of town, I will swing by it and catch the last part of their set. So, Couple of things I, I want to summarize here. Live performances outweigh all other recordings, even videos, by the way. You're never going to get a full representation of what's going on. Plus, you're not part of the culture if you're just watching the video. So, live performances are the best type of hearing you can do, with one exception. We talk about the, the exception in the next video. Two, it doesn't matter who it is that you're listening to or, or how, they, how good they are. It's still more beneficial than videos and recordings. Three, this is how you become part of the culture. You become an active participant in this culture and in this community. And then number four, you contribute to the economy. You know, sometimes the concerts are free. But your presence there is what's going to make it possible for them to get funding for the next concert. A lot of people don't know that, right? They have to take attendance because maybe their performance is funded by a grant. If nobody shows up to the performance, they don't get the grant next year. So there is a financial component to this. If you show up, you help grease the wheels of this music economy. If you don't show up, you're part of the reason why music is suffering in your town. So the live performance thing is huge. Go. Be part of the community. Okay? That's what this video is all about. If you have questions, please feel free to ask below. I encourage you to join us on the... Q&A sessions that we have. If you have questions, come on and hang out and ask your question. Uh, I'll answer in live right there in the Q&A. It's live stream. And if you don't have questions but you just want to hang out, we're cool with that too. Usually we have about 30% of the people who are watching ask questions. So... And you're welcome to be part of the other 70% if you don't want to ask, okay? Well, there you go. I'm going to say again, God bless you.
Uh, we'll see you on the next video and thank you very much.